You're listening to Speaking of Faith with Bishop Dee Dee Duncan Proby of the Episcopal Diocese of Central New York. I'm Rachel Ravalette, or Romcom, and we're glad you're here. Welcome, friends. I am so glad that you have joined this podcast, Speaking of Faith, Speaking of Your Faith, Speaking of Our Faith. And to be clear, you do not need to have a faith at all to be part of this podcast. Come and listen and consider what you believe to be true in your life and in this world. My name is Dee Dee Duncan Proby. I am the Episcopal Bishop of Central New York. That is from Canada to Pennsylvania, Utica to Elmira, and all the beautiful, lovely places in between. Uh, joining me today is Rachel Ravalat, our communications director in the diocese, um, also known as Romcom. So if you see that around the diocese, <laughs> you know who you're talking about. Um, That's me. And I am so glad to ha- have this time to talk about our baptismal covenant. In the Episcopal Church, like in other, uh, there are a number of other denominations. Uh, who have this covenant we make at our baptism, this covenant with God. And uh, we do baptize infants. So sometimes this covenant is taken by the parents and the godparents on behalf of the infant who will then later make their confirmation of this covenant. In the Episcopal Church, this is how we know we are Christians and followers of Jesus is we have covenanted with God. We have made this agreement with the God of all that is. Now, if you have a Book of Common Prayer, if you happen to be an Episcopalian, or if not, uh, we will be talking about the Baptismal Covenant on page 304 and 305 in the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. It is our um, place that we begin. And, our and we can link today, that in the show notes. If you don't have a, if you don't have a BCP at home, that's okay. Uh, it's available online, so we'll link that for you. And yes, and if you want one in real time, then let us know and we'll see how to help you get one. Um, Now, today we started off, watch the first few podcasts because we talk about the God with whom we've covenanted, who we say God is in the baptismal covenant. And I leave room, all of these podcasts are about seeking to understand. This is not about convincing you of anything. It's not about, um, you know, this is a proclamation of invitation that all of us speak of our faith, that all of us come to a deeper understanding of what it is we believe to be true. And in this time with all that's going on, I happen to believe that speaking about our faith helps us to grow in understanding it, especially when we speak of our faith together. Our baptismal covenant is a communal covenant. It says, do you, but it's written to the body of Christ. Do you believe? Mm -hmm. And then the response, you can see the communal response, you know, I will with God's help, this sense of that we all together are responding with this God that is at work in all of us. Now, um, we've gone through God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit in the baptismal covenant, these three ways God has been known. But now we're getting into the so what. So now that Mm -hmm. we've covenanted and we've said who we believe God to be, so what does that mean in our lives? How yeah, what's that, our end of the bargain here? That's right. That's <laughs> right. How will that impact what you and I do today or tomorrow or with the, some of our lives? So the bidding today I will read. And before I read it, let me just say, this is actually from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42. This is the scripture. And our um, in our book of common prayer, it is written with scripture as the place of entry. So it asks, will you continue in the apostles teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? And our response is, I will with God's help. This God of all that is, this God that has come to us in Jesus, this God that inspires and and redeems us in the Holy Spirit, this God alive in us is how we are able to do this. This baptismal covenant is not about being good enough for God. I think sometimes we read it and we think, okay, focus, people, focus. I've got to get better. Bootstraps. That's right. Let's go. Just pull myself (laughs) up here and I will check all these boxes. That's right. God is not inviting us to fix ourselves for God. God is inviting Mm. us to be fixed by God, 
to be empowered by God, to be partners with God, that our talents, our abilities, uh, how we are is a blessing of God that has been gifted to us to yeah. be utilized for the good of all, including ourselves, that all of us are called in to this good work of God. Yeah. Now, Bishop, you, in an earlier episode, you kind of joked that this is the fine print for all the lawyers. Um, and, and that's true. That's where it is, but it's not fine print, like a contract, like a test, like do this or else it's yeah. a, it's an invitation from God to be with God, to be more, to bring others to be with God. It's all, what do you, you say in every episode, relationship, relationship, relationship. It, it really is Rachel. And you know, this, this invitation is very timely because if you're someone who's been thinking, I just have no peace in my life or I can't sleep mm. or I just feel so lost or I'm all alone and no one cares about me or I was a mistake or I should be different or all of those negative messages that the world is so good at constantly ber berating us with. I yeah. mean, the, it's a constant. You're not tall enough, short enough, strong enough, fast enough. You know, it's just that those pressures at times can bear down on us so heavily that we just feel completely alone and lost and our faith as Christians, but also in the Jewish faith or Muslim faith or whatever your faith happens to be, all of us are called into relationship with this deeper part of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And here in today's uh, bidding uh, the based on acts two forty two, you have this invitation to be part of something that is where that peace can be found. Not because we're going to make ourselves so good for God, but because God is so good, God will help us and be with us in especially those times of tragedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the messages of the cross is that there is no tragedy so great. God cannot be found in the midst of it, bringing healing and redemption. Mm -hmm. And we may not be able to see it. We may still be suffering and, and, and Jesus suffered in, uh, in his time on earth. This is part of our faith meets us really in all conditions that mm -hmm. whether we're feeling joyous today or sorrowing, whether we feel lost or we feel the power of a community around us, we can meet uh, God in those very moments. And so here, will you continue in the apostles teaching and fellowship? Well, often we think this is a call, an invitation to the past. Will you continue doing what those people used to do? And partly it is. Partly is you will continue to understand God through the revelations in Scripture, through the, the ongoing work of God, that we stand on the shoulders, literally, of those who've come before us, who mm -hmm. were proclaiming and calling us. And so we are part of that narrative. But we are also part of that narrative. And so this is where, in a previous episode, we talked about anamnesis a bit in our communion, that this, this Jewish understanding of remembrance, mm -hmm. um, where there's a collapse of time, where when we remember the apostles, we become part of what they were doing. And in our remembering, they also become part of what we are presently doing. So will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship? Will you continue to gather and to be part of an ongoing narrative about God's mm -hmm. love and redemption alive in our world. Will mm -hmm. you learn about your faith? I mean, one of the teachings of Paul is that we are to incite one another to good works. We often overlook that. We think we're all supposed to get along, and, <laughs> and that would be great if we could get along <laughs> more. I'm not opposed to that. But, but we actually um, learn from each other. And sometimes, yeah. we, I don't know if you've had this happen, but you'll have a conflict with someone and you're just certain that they're wrong. And as you go through the conflict, you suddenly realize that you, in fact, are wrong. And then you realize, oh, I didn't realize how my behavior and my words were impacting someone else. Yeah. And then you you repent, you, you apologize, or you have that feeling of, oh, I want to do better. And then you, yeah. it deepens the, the friendship. And so here, with continuing the apostles' teaching and fellowship, we learn from each other. We grow together. This is why when people ask me, can you be a Christian sitting on your couch? Well, believing in God and being in relationship with God is something we can do anywhere. Right. And it's almost uh, impossible in a way to have that relationship, relationship, relationship without other people. 
because we can get convinced of our own superiority, our own uh, deformity, and we need that interaction with others. Like I've also talked about it being like a tapestry that's woven together. Each mm -hmm. of them thread and the tapestry and you can't fully see the color and the dy dynamic you're bringing to this tapestry in isolation it's to be woven together in community um and it's so and important there, that and there's a there's a lack of richness right if we're if we're by ourselves is what i hear you saying is that we're just seeing one small part um and we're not able to look with the eyes of christ and see christ looking out through the eyes of another if we're sequestered now they're putting aside like monastic solitaries and people who are called to that sort of but that even that is part of a greater communion right that 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 we're here's how i can contribute to this ongoing growing web of relationships where god is found Mm -hmm. in between and through and within all. Mm -hmm. um, so you're missing, you're missing the richness of diversity, uh, the richness of different perspectives. Exactly. Uh, and you're missing out on hearing truth spoken back to you. Yeah. Because often, I don't know if you've ever had the experience, but you get up in the morning, you think, you know, that you're perfectly fine and everything's good. And then you <laughs> go to work and you're like, what's wrong with those people? They are so cranky. And then you're like, but I'm really good. I'm really doing great. And then you go somewhere else and you're like, what's wrong with those people? They're really cranky. And it, and then you suddenly realize by the feedback loop, wait a minute, I'm doing fine because I'm totally self-centered and self-isolating and I am not needing anyone. I have no empathy or compassion. And yeah. so the reason I feel so secure is because I have sufficiently isolated myself so I cannot be in relationship with other people effectively. So until we hear back from someone, we, you know, we need that feedback because we can't always see where we're at fault because we are so good at convincing ourselves that we're so great. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those core, if you want to talk about sins, which I'm always hesitant a little bit to get into too much because they're usually used to manipulate people. Mm -hmm. But one of the places where we really lose touch with God is when we've put ourselves on the throne of our own lives. If we want to use mm -hmm. that kind of language or we've made us the center of all being instead mm -hmm. of God. And so we start thinking everyone should dance to our tune, as it were, and that what we think is so much better than what someone else thinks. That lack of humility, the lack of empathy will lead us astray every time. It mm -hmm. will corrupt us. And we need the fellowship and the apostles' teaching to keep our, our minds clear, to keep our thinking, you know, in the right order. I mean, one of the, the truths about orthodoxy or right thinking is that uh, there is healthy thinking. There is healthier thinking. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so in this case, you know, to continue in the apostles' teaching, again, it doesn't say to do it. It doesn't say completion. It says continue. This is an ongoing work all of our lives where we, you know, we'll read a verse. I, I can't tell you the number of times that I have done serious study and exegesis looking into a passage. And then I get into the service and some beautiful young, you know, soul gets up and starts to proclaim the, the word of God and, and reads it, you know, having just that morning gotten up to read it. And I'll hear something I never heard in my uh, preparation yeah. because yeah. they're, they're proclaiming the scriptures from a, a authentic place. And yeah. it's like, Oh, I'm hearing that with new ears because I'm hearing it from this new heart and all of us need one another to hear God clearly. Now let's well, go on because I want to get through the whole bidding. <laughs> we could, um, we could really stay there for a while. Couldn't we? We could. <laughs> and we will go back to it a bit. And if you, you know, Sounds comments good. and questions, the breaking of bread and in the prayers. Now the breaking mm. of bread here, uh, this, this fellowship and eating together is very communion language are the Lord's supper and scriptures and, and what we do each Sunday with having communion or, um, as often as you may have it in, in a parish. Um, and it's, uh, well, one of the ways of understanding our communion is, uh, Dom Gregory Dix, who old, these, this is old, old 1800s or probably before that suddenly can't remember, but, uh, taken, blessed, broken, given this hmm. pattern in our communion that we're taken up by God 
blessed by God, that our hearts are broken open with the love of God and that we are given and offered to the world. So mm -hmm. each Holy Communion, we are offered uh, the body and blood of Christ, which can sound very macabre if you think that this is some. So let me unpack that a little bit. Sure, um, sure. We're offered this food to break that we're taken, blessed, broken, given um, it with the love of God to mm -hmm. become that which we have received. That in mm -hmm. that in in taking God's blessing into us, we become uh, people um, alive with God. And so we are Eucharistic in the Episcopal Church. Other churches are have different understandings of this. So whatever your faith tradition may be, you may come to this with very different ears and eyes than we have in the Episcopal Church. Um, there's a very long podcast we could do about communion. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> We will Nerd alert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We will do it in the future uh, where we talk a lot about what it, you know, the symbology and the people gathered and where is Jesus present and in the people that's, and in the elements. And that's you know, the question whole, right there, isn't it? There, where is Jesus? Thing. There's a yeah. whole thing. And, um, but for today and to keep with this bidding, let's stay with that we're called to gather and to, to dwell together and to mm -hmm. intake God's love and forgiveness. And that it's present in the bread and the wine that we're with that anamnesis, you know, going back to the way of remembering, but especially with the koinonia that we are bonding together. Ooh, we're coming together. Um, and as God's faithful people gathered with all who have ever been and all who will ever be in this sacred moment of, remembrance and being at the table with Jesus and in remembrance of me, eat this bread and drink this wine. When you come together, remember me as you do this and take into you the offering that Jesus is to the world and that we may become an offering of God for the world, that we too are taken, blessed, broken, and given. And the broken can sound a macabre as well, mm. but when you think of when your heart is broken open, and mm -hmm. like on those days where you have isolated yourself and you're lacking empathy, when you finally break open and discover mm -hmm. empathy again and cry the tears that may need to be cried or say the words that need to be said of forgiveness or healing or truth. That's telling. liberation is what that is. It breaks you open and then you're, yep. you're, you're able then to be given. You have something yep. to offer that's not like what everybody else is doing. It's mm -hmm. very unique what it is to be a Christian in this time. Um, we have been sort of co-opted or corrupted or whatever word you want to use that might not start with the C. Um, <laughs> uh, true. You know, there's been a long period of time where being a Christian was sort of a ideological conscription into sort of 10 ways that you're supposed to live. And previous to that, um, it's always important to remember that being a Christian was not something that Peter and Paul thought they were signing on necessarily to be right. Um, people started derogatorily referring to them as those little Christ, those people who think they're so special because they're like that Jesus. And mm -hmm. it was a moniker actually given to, because they were acting like Jesus. They were still doing and saying and, and, and going around and, and communing like Jesus called them to. And so mm. they were labeled that as, you know, um, in, in a derogatory way. It wasn't something they took on and said, I am now a Christian. It was mm -hmm. something that was uh, you know, given to them because their life so um, seemed to people watching as something mm -hmm. very unique and different from themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's important here to recognize that um, we're talking about a covenant with a God and Jesus, when Jesus came to us and came to earth, um, was Jewish in that expression. Mm -hmm. And this passage, this growing and understanding, often when we talk about these things as Christians, it is very easy to slide into, at first, a subtle anti-Semitism, and then perhaps later, a more decided anti-Semitism, where it's like those Jews. and. Yep one of the teachings that's still out there and still very prevalent when we talk about what, when we're speaking of faith is who killed Jesus and the mm. teaching that's out there 
is that it was the Jews. Well, the understanding we have in our baptismal covenant is that we are all part of this brokenness that God is seeking to heal. And so that is all of us together when we reject goodness or when we're hard-hearted, that we are part of what needs to be healed. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you lose your... I did. I, I, <laughs> there are no electronics in the way of the water, so we're going to let it, we're going to let it sit. <laughs> Just in um, case you weren't sure that we were real life people <laughs> doing this podcast. We, we want to make sure that people know this is real. Life. This is authentic folks. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, so, so with this bidding, will you continue in the apostles teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? What we're participating in is an ongoing work of God that calls us, invites us. And when I say call it, it's an invitation that's already in us. To be part of something that's helping to restore the world. And prayers yeah. is one of those things that I think is often misunderstood. Prayers mm -hmm. are a very active way of, of holding before God a situation. And this isn't about, um, you know, whoever has the most prayers wins. This is about our being transformed by praying. Mm -hmm. Because again, that, that person who woke up in the morning and felt so great and so self-reliant and everything was going great until they had to interact with anyone else besides themselves. Mm -hmm. Prayer is also breaking open, interacting with God, because sometimes when we're in that place of feeling so good, we don't really want to talk to God because right. we might be faced with our own brokenness or faced with something that needs healing. And mm -hmm. so prayer is our way that we come before God and we are transformed. So when we pray for a situation, we may realize that we feel differently about that situation than we did before we prayed. Or when we are praying for a situation, it may stir within us a desire to do something that would not have come up if we hadn't taken that moment to stop and pray mm -hmm. and recenter ourselves on this invitation to be about our faith in the world. Yeah. Prayer is an action in that it helps, helps us to refocus and for prayer to really obviously be fully effective, it means then we go and it changes the way we live in some fashion. We don't yeah. just pray and then drop it at the altar and say, well, I did that. So, you know, mischief managed. Um, not at all. We pray and come before God's redeeming spirit. Our understanding is transformed. And then we go from there renewed in our intent that we're going to live the way Jesus has called us to live, loving God with each aspect of our lives, loving our neighbor as ourselves in full relationship, not to get something from people, not to show how good we are, but to actually care about people because we know the power of when we have been cared about and we mm -hmm. are living faithfully our faith that calls us to be loving. I think mm -hmm. you can always tell when you're loving your neighbor um, for yourself when you're loving to them and they don't respond the way you want and you're kind of rebuffed, like, well, they weren't appreciative. Well, that yeah. didn't work. It's yeah. Like, okay. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so you were loving, you were loving your neighbor so you could get a thing. Right. But when we really love our neighbor, no matter what their response is, it doesn't change our desire to be loving. And that really, we paying attention to that truth. And so, you know, really, um, you know, kind of going back to this understanding of taken, blessed, broken, given. When, when we see ourselves as being God's people that we've covenanted with God and we have, we've made this, uh, we've accepted God's invitation to be part of our lives in every aspect of it. And mm -hmm. when we have been blessed by that, which we are, because then suddenly we're not alone in the horrible moments or suddenly we're not alone when we're rejoicing suddenly we're part of a community that's all around us. And yeah. then we're broken open because all that hard heartedness is, is, is opened up. A very wise monk once said uh, to me, what broke so that you could find God? Because question. Human, human being so often is a closed sphere. If you think of it that way, uh, yeah. I thought it's sphere. And we're very self-reliant and we're very intent on not letting anything change us anything in any we're going to control protective universe. yeah that's right very in and what happens is some and it may be a, an actual event it may be 
something else, but we're broken open by something and we can't solve it and it's beyond us. And we suddenly encounter a world beyond our control. Mm -hmm. And that is with this faith. When we're speaking of faith, we're talking about something that is beyond us. So the apostles teaching, it's not something you just believe one day and then you set it down because all of it is beyond us. A God that loves us, God uh-huh. that's at the ground of all being, a Holy Spirit that's moving among us. How do we know what's true? How do we know what's right? So speaking of faith like we are today is an opportunity to once again work with our faith, as St. Paul would say, to work out our faith, Mm -hmm. which is really rooted in the rabbinical understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, St. Paul, uh, other scripture writers, you know, Matthew, Mark, we're going into the season when we'll be reading a lot in the gospel of Mark, is coming from a very Jewish perspective. So Mm -hmm. as Christians, as followers of Jesus, um, we have a, we have a particular own uh, uh, responsibility to be working for the well-being of our our Jewish siblings around mm-hmm. us. We have a responsibility to seek and serve Christ, which we'll get to later. It's a later bidding, in all persons, because this belief that we have is coming to us from these understandings of anamnesis, a Jewish way of remembering. Mm-hmm koinonia, the body coming together, um, that we are part of, that the more, that as we live our lives, we keep deepening and deepening and deepening our understanding of this relationship, relationship, Mm -hmm. relationship. So it's an ongoing work that doesn't stop. And as we say here in this bidding, we will, we will with God's help, that only by God's help can we really do these things because it all is beyond us. And so you, dear listener, and all of us, we are being invited to respond, invited to say, yes, I will, with God's help today, continue in the apostles' teaching. I'll continue to learn. I'll continue Mm -hmm. to grow. I'll continue to face the truth about myself. And I'll continue to seek and serve. And I'll continue to do the things Jesus has called me to do because I want to, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be at peace. I want to you know, know the gift of what God's offering me. It reminds me, we say a lot in the Episcopal Church that praying shapes believing. Mm-hmm. And in an earlier episode of this podcast, we talked about how belief is maybe better understood instead of intellectual assent as belove. Mm-hmm. That this is what I'm going to belove and I'm going to work. This is how I'm going to, I'm, this is the story I'm going to belove. I'm going to belove the people around me. I'm going to seek them in this fellowship, um, which I should say growing up in an evangelical church fellowship meant potluck. And so fellowship <laughs> includes deviled eggs. So if you weren't sold on <laughs> fellowship before, well, you've got deviled eggs. That. It's, it's sometimes, you know, it, it is true. Sometimes the baptismal covenant is just not specific enough. And it did leave out the devil's eggs there. But, but yes, the gathering together and the prayers, those things that root us just like that, the, the expectation, this is what community means is for us to be in this place together, being about the teachings of Jesus. So dear friends, this, uh, this podcast is for you to speak of faith to talk with one another, to speak back and send us your questions or your comments, to to continue to work out in your own heart what your faith means to you, to what is God's invitation to you. And next time we'll be talking about, will you persevere in resisting evil? We'll be talking about evil here. So uh, come back and listen and be part of the ongoing conversation as all of us speak of faith. Blessings to you. And I look forward to hearing from you and talking with you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Speaking of Faith with Bishop Dede is a production of the Episcopal Diocese of Central New York. Our theme music is by Fleece Mob, and it's called A Bird in Hand. We use it with permission. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast through your favorite podcasting app so that you can be the first to know when new episodes are available. If you like what you've heard here, please leave us a rating and review. If you don't like what you've heard here, we're sure you're still a wonderful person, but maybe don't leave us a review. Just kidding. We love honest feedback and questions. You can connect with us online between episodes at cnyepiscopal.org backslash podcast and on social media at CNY Episcopal. 
Blessings to you, friends.